I feel very proud to be an Indian, and I'm sure a lot of people feel. But corruption bothers me, and I'm sure you also spoke about it. How do you think spirituality can help get rid of corruption to some extent? So let's understand this uh, corruption because it's a it's a very important thing that everybody understands this properly in its right perspective. Rather than reacting against a bunch of people who are in an advantageous position, okay? <laughs> Why I want you to understand this is because for the first time in the history of independent India, the sixty-four years, that means two generations of people, they have at least fifty to sixty percent of them have had such a bad deal. Today you and me, we'll talk all this and go home and eat well. There's a whole bunch of people, almost four hundred million people who cannot do that. So. If we handle the next five to ten years right, we can change that. It's a tremendous possibility which is on our threshold. There's an economic possibility sitting on the threshold. If we conduct this right, we can change their lives. Those people who have not eaten properly, those children who are malnourished, which have the highest level of malnourishment, those who are not educated, those who don't have opportunities, those who are in that horrible social and economic pit, their lives can change in the next five to ten years if we conduct our act right. Every Indian should understand this. It is not just about economy means stock market. It is about hungry people who will have food on their plate. Economy does not mean stock market, economy does not mean uh, foreign cars coming into India, economy does not mean you wear better clothes or this and that. Improving economy means there will be no hungry children in the country, which is something all of us should do something about. And that possibility, that possibility is being jeopardized. So this possibility is being jeopardized by a handful of people, or it is wrong to say it's a handful of people, it's a nation full of corruption. Because how many people in Mumbai streets, if there is no policeman will start at the red… stop at the red light? I think only ten percent will stop. So these ninety percent are corrupt people. If they make… if you make them the chief ministers and prime ministers, you know what they will do. So instead of just calling it by one bad word called corruption, we need to understand we as a society are trying to move from a feudalistic way of managing our lives to a democratic way. The democratic way has still not sunk into us. Democracy will not happen with an active sense of education as to what is democracy, what is the power of democracy, what it means, what is the responsibility of living in a democratic society. This has not been done. We just took democracy from the British and we think if they just put their oat and get their fingers dirty once in five years, everything is settled. No, we have not educated people. We are still a feudalistic society acting to be democratic.